Hello students, welcome to the third lecture of the chapter Herbs as Raw Material. I am Dr. Kuman Manan, Associate Professor, Lloyd Institute of Management and Technology. Today, I shall be dealing with the processing of herbal materials. In the previous chapters, we have started about the plant identification and authentication. Now, what do we need to do is we need to collect the plant. So, we shall discuss and study collection of herb. Plant ya herb ko collect karna ek bahut important aspect hai. Isko karne ke liye you need to have some factors in your mind and you have to be very particular about those. Say number one, the proper time of collection is important. We have to see what is the actual time of the collection. We have to make ensure जब भी हम प्लांट को हर्ब को कलेक्ट करें उसके अंदर उसका एक्टिव कंस्टिट्यूएंट मैक्सिमम हो जब भी हम किसी फ्रूट को कलेक्ट करें वो राइप हो जब भी हम किसी लीफ को कलेक्ट करें वो मैच्योर हो सो वी वी हैव टू मेक इंश्योर दैट सम अदर फैक्टर्स व्हिच वी नीड टू कंसीडर आर कलेक्टेड व्हेन द लेवल ऑफ द एक्टिव कंस्टिट्यूएंट आर मैक्सिमम एज आई टोल्ड यू the plant of the species hyoscyamus or the belladonna they are collected at the time before their flowering occurs why because at that time the alkaloid content is high Another factor is we have to collect when the material is dry to give the maximum quality and appearance. We have to take care when you are going to collect that there are the drying conditions, there is no rainfall, the soil should not be much wet at that time. Then the different environmental factors to be considered are light, humidity, altitude, rainfall, soil etc. General scheme for collection for the different part of the plant is given, but we have to make it sure that we are also following it. Say the root. Root is generally collected or the beginning of the spring season just before the flowering occurs. Rhizome is always collected during the reproductive phase. Leaves are collected before the plant reaches the flowering stage. So, leaves are collected before the plant reaches the flower. Flowers, flowers they are generally collected before pollination takes place. They are collected when the weather is dry and especially during the morning hours. Gums and latex, gums and latex are generally oozing out from the stem, right. So, they are obtained by making incision on the plant part and collected immediately as they ooze out. Whatever mechanical tool, a blade, a sharp instrument, a knife which we are using to make an incision that has to be sterile, that has to be free from the microorganisms, that has to be clean enough. The moment we make incision, the exudate that becomes out. So, we have to make sure we have to collect it immediately. Fruit is generally collected when it is fully grown in size. Some guidelines are given by WHO regarding the collection of the medicinal plants. World Health Organization has given these guidelines and we actually need to follow them strictly. They are damaged part of the plant should be avoided. If we see that the plant of the plant, plant part which we are need to focusing or which we need to collect is being damaged, it is broken, it is being uh, infected by some insect, infested or some by some animal, then we are not supposed to take it. It has to be avoided. Plant part should be collected under the most ideal condition, keeping away from the wet soil, dew, rainfall or the high humidity conditions. The cutters or the harvesters must be maintained to avoid contamination from the soil particles. Care should be taken to ensure that there are no dangerous weeds which are bled with the medicinal plants. We have often seen at our homes 
जब हम विंटर्स में ग्रीन लीफी वेजिटेबल्स लाते हैं पालक स्पिनच सरसों एंड बथुआ वी गेट दीज इन आर एट होम्स इन विंटर्स हम नॉर्मली खाते हैं तो जब उसकी हम क्लेरिंग करते हैं जब हम उसको साफ करते हैं तो उसके अंदर कुछ अनवॉन्टेड पत्ते भी आते हैं दोज आर वीड्स सो वाइल एट द टाइम ऑफ द कलेक्शन वॉट अ फार्मर डज डू ही डज इट इन हरिड मैनर फटाफट सॉइल से प्लकिंग किया और उसको बंच किया बट इन द केस ऑफ द मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स दिस कैन नॉट बी टेकन वी हैव टू स्ट्रिक्टली अवॉइड दैट देर आर नो वीड्स अलॉन्ग विद द एक्चुअल मेडिसिनल एरोमेटिक प्लांट सम अदर गाइडलाइंस आर ऑल्सो हियर दैट द कंटेनर्स ड्यूरिंग कलेक्शन मस्ट बी क्लीन एंड फ्री ऑफ द कंटामिनेशन फ्रॉम द पास्ट हार्वेस्ट आपने उन्हीं कंटेनर्स में उन्हीं बास्केट्स में उन्हीं ट्रेज में अगर पहले किसी और प्लांट पार्ट को कलेक्ट किया है so that has to be clean that has to be sterile and then that has to be reused then mechanical harm and the compacting of the medicinal plant that can bring undesirable quality changes must be avoided when you are collecting the plant part in that case aap usko multiple stacking na de like you have placed a layer of one plant then another then another then another so that is going to give a mechanical pressure and it is going to harm the structure of that plant then the collected product must be shielded from the pest mice or rodents and the domesticated animals and the household creatures so you have to take care ki in sab mein se kisi ka bhi entry nahi ho processing of herbal material अब आपने प्लांट को आइडेंटिफाई कर लिया ऑथेंटिकेट कर लिया डब्ल्यू एच ओ की गाइडलाइंस के अकॉर्डिंग आपने उसको कलेक्ट भी कर लिया नाउ यू हैव टू प्रोसेस इट सो दैट आप क्रू ड्रग को एक प्रोसेस ड्रग में कन्वर्ट कर सकें उसके लिए कुछ स्टेप्स हैं विच आर मैंशनड हियर प्रोसेसिंग इन्वॉल्व वेरियस स्टेजेस फॉर विच द क्रू ड्रग्स अंडर गो आफ्टर हार्वेस्टिंग आफ्टर कटिंग आफ्टर कलेक्शन the crude drug has to undergo these processes now these can be either primary processes which includes garbling washing leaching drying similarly secondary processes includes cutting or sectioning aging roasting and frying let us study these processes one by one the first one is drying as the name suggests drying removes sufficient moisture to ensure good keeping qualities normally hum ye process apne ghar mein household condiments masalon ke liye bhi karte hain hum unko acche se dry karte hain dhoop mein hum normally mirch dhaniya jeera aur bahut sare sookhe masale rakhte hain so that wo moisture free rahe unke andar koi pest control nahi ho koi microbial growth nahi ho wo ek lambe samay tak preserve reh sake so this is basically the purpose of the drying here also in the medicinal and the aromatic plants it prevents molding action of enzyme the action of bacteria and chemicals or other possible changes jo usme ho sakte hain because of the moisture content so we have to prevent the moisture we have to prevent the plant from the moisture entry so we have to dry it drying also helps in preserving the drug for a longer time and give better pharmaceutical elegance it also fixes the constituents and felicitates grinding and milling agar hamari drug acche se dry nahi hai to wo fracture acche se nahi ho pati hai by just clicking the sound of a fracture say if you have a seed right and if it is not dry once you'll break the seed you will get to know by the sound of the fracture it make if it is a sharp one it means it is a dry one so one which is dry only that is able to be ground or milled besides that drying converts the drug into more convenient form for the handling agar hum plant ko dry nahi karenge as it is rakhenge to ye sab disadvantages to hongi hi besides that uski handling bhi mushkil hogi because once it is dry it is going to have a lesser of the space it is going to have lesser of the moisture and it can be easily put in a container and hence its commercial handling can be done now 
there are different type of drying processes. Now, we need to focus on these two principles which are important while drying the herb. Number one is the control of temperature and the other is regulation of the air flow. Different methods of drying are given. The first one is the natural drying or the sun drying. We normally do this process for the drugs which can take up the heat of the sun. The sun is the source of a heat, it has infrared rays and it dries the herb. Natural drying or the sun drying here, the contents of the drug are quite stable to the temperature and the sunlight and the drugs which are dried in this manner includes gum acacia, seeds and the small sized fruits. Next we have the shade drying. Some drugs which are not sufficient enough to bear the heat of the sun rays, they are dried in the shade. Chaya mein sukhaya jata hai usko. Here the natural color and the volatile principles are maintained and retained. The plant maintain its color, the plant maintain its volatile oil. Example includes digitalis, clove, sena, peppermint, leafy and flower drugs. Third method of drying is the artificial drying. We shall study the artificial drying in the next slide. Artificial drying is done by three manners. Number one is the tray dryer or the oven dryer. You might have seen the oven in your laboratories. Oven is a instrument or an apparatus which op works on the basis of the hot air. It has a cabinet it has trays inside it. So, the tray dryer of the oven drying includes, this is basically for the drugs which contain volatile oil and are quite stable to heat which need deactivation of the enzymes, hot air of the required temperature is circulated in the oven. Example is root and the bark drugs. Jin bark drugs ki hum root use karte hain, hum usko isme dry kar sakte hain. Yahaan pe hum required temperature condition advise kar sakte hain, se mat apne tarikhe se control kar sakte hain, so that hum plant ko dry kar sakte Next is the vacuum dryer. Vacuum dryer is the one where it is applied to the drugs which are sensitive to the high temperature, examples, tenants and digitalis leaves. Vacuum dry ke kuch advantages hai, here you can control the temperature, you can control the humidity, you can control the time for drying and there is no like a uh, problem with the climate there. Another is the spray dryer. Drugs which are sensitive to atmospheric conditions and also to the temperature of the vacuum drying, they are dried with the help of the spray dryer. For example, papaya latex and pectin. The another technique is the garbling or the dressing. Jab hum plant ke paat ko collect karte hain, to uske andar kuch unwanted undesirable, extraneous, foreign material aa jate hain, jisko hume separate karna hota hai. That step is called garbling. The removal of extraneous matter such as the parts of the same plant, dirt, sand, foreign, organic matter and added adulterant is called as garbling. For example, if I am focusing on the leaf of the plant. So, while plucking the leaf, it is but obvious that I am going to have the part of the stem in my collected plant. I have the leaves here. See, this is my leaves collection. It is quite obvious there are some pieces of the stem which I do not require. So, this I need to remove. If I am collecting the roots, so this is the root of the plant, I have to pluck it off. So, while collecting the root or plucking the root, there is but obviously 
incoming of the soil which is attached to the root, the environment in which the root is living actually. So, that has to be removed. So, during the collection and harvesting, we should be uh, these things are bound to be carried which we need to remove before the packing. Now, these things this garbling or the dressing that can be done either by manually by hand picking or by mechanical means. Examples are clove stalks are removed from the clove, rhizomes are separated from the roots, rootlets and the stem bases, small pieces of the bark are removed from the gum, soil is removed from the roots and rhizomes, stems are removed from the leaves. So, these are the various examples where the garbling is required. Now comes the packaging, storage and preservation. Once we have identified the plant, we have collected it, we have now dried it, we need to pack it properly. So, for that we need to take care of the sum of the factors that compactly and hard packed beels, barks and resinous drug absorb a little moisture. So, we have to pack them accordingly. Aloe drug is generally packed in the goat skin. Similarly, balsam is balsam which is an oleogum resin that is packed in the tins. So, we have to identify the appropriate container as per the requirement of the herb. Small lots of drugs may be stored in tight and light resistant container. Squill and ergot say for example, these are the plant parts which are supposed to be stored in the container which is light resistant. Tin cans, covered metal bins or amber glass containers are most satisfactory for this purpose. Crude drugs should not be stored in open wooden boxes or the dryers or never in the paper bag. A suitable non liquefying inert dehydrating agent may be introduced into the container. We generally add a desiccant so that if by chance there is a moisture in the pack drug, the desiccant that can absorb that moisture and it is going to act as a dehydrating agents. Another factors which we need to consider while packaging, storage and preservation includes drugs must be stored at the possible low temperature, the warehouses, the area where the storage is being done, jo godam hoi, jahan pe aap usko store karte ho, that should be cool, dark and well ventilated. The simplest method used for the destruction of insects and prevention of their attack is to expose the crude drug to at 65 degrees Celsius or generally it can be fumigated with methyl bromide. If the drugs are in small quantity in the stored airtight container, insect attack that can be controlled by adding few drops of chloroform or carbon tetrachloride from time to time. So, we have to ensure that while packaging, storage and preservation, there is no contact or the no entry of any kind of rodents, insects or the microbes. Thank you.